Let's ultrasound! On today's edition of Doppler Ultrasound, let's talk about the Color Doppler Optimization Checklist. Step number one in optimizing our color Doppler is to first optimize the grayscale image. And I like to think of this as garbage in and garbage out. The very first step to a properly optimized Doppler ultrasound image is to first look at your grayscale image. And the grayscale image should be optimized before the Doppler is even turned on. If the quality of the grayscale image is poor, garbage in, then the quality of the Doppler image can only be as good as the starting image garbage out. To optimize your grayscale image, first look at your frequency. And you want to use the highest frequency that allows penetration down through to your area of interest. Next, look at the depth. The area of interest should be located about three quarters of the way down the screen. Next, look at the focal zones. The lowest focal zone should be placed at or slightly below the area of interest. TGC and gain are the next factors to consider. For TGC, you want equal brightness at all depths in the image and each tissue type should maintain its unique echogenicity. And for your gain, you want to ensure that the image is not too dark or too bright so that you can distinguish between different structures within the image. The next step to properly optimizing a color Doppler image is to create an angle. And it's really crucial to know that Doppler loves angles, but it doesn't love all angles equally. It loves angles from zero to 60 degrees. At zero degrees, the maximum Doppler shift is going to occur. Above 60 degree angles produce inaccurate Doppler information. And at 90 degrees, there's no Doppler shift information. So if the transducer and the vessel form a 90 degree angle from one another, they are perpendicular to each other, then there will be no Doppler shift and the color box will not display a color signal. You know that your vessel is perpendicular to the transducer if it lies completely flat and horizontal on the ultrasound image. If you're using a curvilinear transducer, it's not possible to steer the color box in order to create an angle. So it's necessary to heel toe the transducer. And this means pressing harder on either, the, on either the back end or the front end of the transducer to cause the vessel itself to lie more vertically on the image. And this creates an angle by using the vessel itself. If you're using a linear transducer, you want to both heel toe the transducer to create an angle in your vessel and also steer your color box either to the right or to the left to match the lie of the vessel. And this is going to produce the strongest Doppler signal within the vessel. The top image displays a vessel in which the heel toe technique was used to create an angle to the vessel since the curvilinear box cannot be steered. In the bottom image, a heel toe technique was also used to create an angle in the vessel and the color Doppler box angle was steered to match the lie of the vessel. Now note that it is possible possible to obtain color Doppler information by leaving the box unsteered. This means that it just points straight down and by angling the vessel itself or by leaving the vessel horizontal on the screen and steering the color box, you can also obtain a Doppler signal. Both of these scenarios actually create an angle. However, the strongest Doppler signal is going to be obtained by doing both these techniques, both creating an angle with the vessel and steering the box. The next step in our color Doppler optimization checklist is to adjust the color box size and the color box position. To adjust the color Doppler box size, you want to adjust the size of the color box so that the top and the bottom sides of the Doppler box are roughly one finger width distance above and below the vessel or the area of interest. And then you want to decrease the width of the color box until it matches the height or it's slightly smaller than the height. If the color Doppler box is too large and or the width of the color box is too wide, then there will be decreased Doppler sensitivity. A small Doppler box equals a higher frame rate, which means an increased PRF, which leads to better Doppler sensitivity. If the color Doppler box is too small, then any information that's located outside the Doppler box will be lost. The next step is to adjust the position 
position of the color Doppler box and you want to position the color Doppler box so that it is centered over the vessel, both side to side in the image and top to bottom. If the color Doppler box is not centered, then important Doppler information that's outside the box can be lost. In the top image, the Doppler box size and position are optimized, providing the best conditions for obtaining Doppler information. And in the bottom image, the box is too small and too wide, and this is going to result in lost information and also a weaker Doppler signal. The next trick in our color Doppler optimization checklist is to optimize the color Doppler gain. Grayscale is not the only thing that has its own gain level. The color Doppler control, the spectral Doppler control, and the power Doppler control also have their own gain controls. And the color Doppler gain control is going to amplify the Doppler signals that are in the ultrasound machine. To set the correct color Doppler gain level, you want to turn the color Doppler gain up until noise is displayed displayed within the color Doppler box. This is all the little extra speckles of color within the color box. And then you want to turn the gain knob down just until the noise disappears. This is the optimal color Doppler gain level. And note that this color Doppler gain level is going to need to be readjusted as depth, PRF and other controls are manipulated on the ultrasound machine. If the color Doppler gain is too high, you're going to see noise in the color box. These are artifactual color echoes that do not represent actual Doppler information. You'll also notice color bleed. This is when color is spilling over the edges of a vessel. If the color Doppler gain is too low, there's going to be no color Doppler signal within the Doppler box, or you're going to have a very weak color Doppler signal within the box. A gain level that is set too low can also lead to the false impression that a vessel or structure has absent flow. So setting the correct color Doppler gain is one of the most essential things that you do when you first start using Doppler. The next step in our color Doppler optimization checklist is the PRF or scale control. Doppler has a limit and past this limit, the ultrasound machine can no longer measure the velocity of the flow because it is too high. And this is known as the Nyquist limit. The Nyquist limit is the maximum limit of the Doppler shift that can be measured and displayed by the ultrasound machine. Above this Nyquist limit, aliasing occurs. The Nyquist limit is half of the PRF. Aliasing is flow that changes speed and direction either due to vessel dynamics or improper color settings. And it appears as multiple colors displayed within a structure or vessel on color Doppler. Artifactual velocities occur when the velocity of the flow has exceeded the Nyquist limit. Aliasing can also represent velocities that are true velocities, such as within an area of vessel curvature or narrowing, or when flow velocities become turbulent and increase in velocity. And causes of false aliasing are the use of angles over 60 degrees or a PRF that's set too low. Ultrasound pulses are transmitted at a certain frequency and the number of pulses of sound that occur in one second is the PRF or the pulse repetition frequency. The ultrasound PRF or scale control increases or decreases the range of velocities that the ultrasound machine can detect. It changes the range of velocities displayed on the color Doppler map. Now let's look at these three scenarios. In this scenario to the left, the PRF is set too low. You're gonna see rainbow colors within the vessel. This is aliasing. True aliasing is caused by vessel stenosis, curving, branching, or turbulence. False aliasing is gonna occur when flow exceeds the Nyquist limit or angles over 60 degrees are used within Doppler. In the middle image, the PRF is set too high. The vessel is going to fail to fill in with a color Doppler signal. And this can also miss slow flow states. It's important to note that the PRF and the wall filter are often linked on many ultrasound machines. So increasing the PRF is going to also increase the wall filter, which is going to decrease your Doppler sensitivity. In the image to the far right, the PRF is set correctly. There's no rainbow colors within the vessel, which is known as aliasing, and the vessel is filling in with a color Doppler signal. Note that you're going to need to adjust the color Doppler gain again after 
adjusting the PRF control. The next step in our color Doppler optimization checklist is knowing the difference between aliasing and a true flow direction change. With a true change in flow direction, you're going to see a black line. And this black line represents an area of no flow. And it's going to separate the red and the blue colors. And this indicates a true change in the direction of blood flow. Note that you may or may not have aliasing present within vessels that are displaying a true flow direction change. And this is represented by the top image. This is an image of an umbilical cord in which the umbilical artery and the umbilical vein are traveling different directions. In between each red and blue color is a black line and this represents an area of no flow. So this is indicating that the red areas on the image and the blue areas on the image are traveling in different directions. And this is a true flow direction difference. With aliasing, as you can can see in the bottom image, there's no black line separating the red and the blue colors. Rather, the red and the blue colors and many of the colors on the color Doppler map spectrum are all intermixed. There's a mosaic of colors. Also, there's going to be a light colored border along the edges of the aliasing. The next setting in our color Doppler optimization checklist is the wall filter. And the wall filter acts as a filter. It rejects all signals below a certain threshold. And this is commonly linked with the PRF control. When the PRF is adjusted higher, the wall filter setting also increases higher. Generally, a low wall filter setting is best when using Doppler. When you're using a wall filter that's too high, it's going to reject all low frequency signals and so many signals are going to be rejected that it will be challenging to obtain a color signal within the vessel or the area of interest as there's going to be poor color filling of the vessel and it's also going to be doubly hard to obtain slow flow. When the wall filter is set too low, you'll have more noise or motion artifacts as the wall filter helps eliminate noise from motion in the surrounding tissues and or from the motion of the vessel walls. The next control in our color Doppler optimization checklist is the threshold setting. The threshold assigns the grayscale level at which color information stops. And this is also called the color priority control. And you want this to be set fairly high, generally start around 70%. When the threshold control is set too high, it's going to display more color and less grayscale. The color Doppler information is going to override the grayscale information. It's going to suppress the grayscale information. And this is when color bleed or color spilling outside of vessel walls can occur. When the color threshold is set too low, it's going to display more grayscale and less color. The grayscale is going to override the color Doppler signals. It's going to suppress the color. And this is going to minimize color bleed, the color spilling outside of vessel walls. However, you're going to have poor color sensitivity, especially in large vessels, as the vessel will not fill in with a color signal. The next control on our color Doppler optimization checklist is accumulation. And this control holds the color signal longer on the image. And this is helpful when you're imaging deep structures and our structures with really slow flow. When the accumulation is set too high, it's going to remove the pulsatility patterns of the vessel as the flow is going to be held on the screen for longer. And it's not useful when evaluating the flow characteristics of a vessel as it eliminates these features such as pulsatility. Also, it can create an artifactual flow signal if it's set too high. When accumulation is off or set very low, the flow characteristics of a vessel such as pulsatility can be evaluated. But when imaging deep or slow flow areas, it can be really hard to obtain low. I like to use the accumulation setting on a low setting when I'm scanning the transabdominal pelvis and trying to obtain a color Doppler signal within the transabdominal ovary. Since this is going to be located deeply in the tissue and also ovaries have a slow flow state, it can be challenging to obtain a signal. Holding the color signal with a low accumulation setting can help obtain flow in a transabdominal ovary.
The next thing to consider when optimizing a color Doppler image is depth and color Doppler. It's crucial to know how these terms are related. The deeper the depth, the weaker the Doppler signal. And this is due to attenuation, which is the loss of the strength of a sound wave as it propagates deeper into the tissues or through a dense structure. The signal returning to the transducer from a deeper depth is weaker than the signal returning from a shallower depth. And this also holds true with Doppler signals. If the vessel vessel or area of interest that you are attempting to obtain a Doppler signal in lies deep in the tissues and you can only obtain a weak Doppler signal, adjust your angle, meaning come from a different scanning window or patient position in order to try to make a vessel or the area of interest closer to the transducer, a shallower depth. This will help you obtain a stronger Doppler signal. Next in our color Doppler optimization checklist is understanding the difference between transducer frequency and color Doppler. Higher frequency transducers have greater Doppler sensitivity, but they can only penetrate to shallow depths. The higher frequency sound waves attenuate faster than the lower frequency sound waves, which limits their ability to penetrate deeper into the tissue. Lower frequency transducers have decreased Doppler sensitivity, but they can pick up Doppler flow at deeper depths. When imaging superficial structures, use a higher frequency transducer for better Doppler sensitivity. When imaging deep structures, use a lower frequency transducer for increased penetration, though the Doppler signal is going to lose sensitivity as it travels deeper into the tissue. Color Doppler itself also has a frequency setting, which can be decreased to obtain better color sensitivity at deeper depths. The last stop in our color Doppler optimization checklist is the baseline color Doppler control. The baseline on a color map is the black line separating the positive and the negative Doppler shifts, and it represents an area of no flow, no Doppler shift. The baseline control on an ultrasound machine allows either the positive or the negative Doppler shifts to be emphasized, which helps minimize aliasing when the PRF or scale control is already optimized to its maximum optimal point. It can, however, interfere with direction of flow and aliasing interpretation. If the baseline control is shifted higher, then negative Doppler shifts are going to be emphasized over the positive Doppler shifts. And this can cause aliasing within the positive Doppler shift areas of flow. And if the baseline control is shifted lower, the positive Doppler shifts are going to be emphasized over the negative Doppler shifts. And this can cause aliasing within the negative Doppler shift flow areas. And this is most commonly visualized when imaging the common carotid artery and the internal jugular vein next to each other, since they are traveling different directions. If the baseline is changed so that flow in the common carotid artery is emphasized, then aliasing can occur within the internal jugular vein. And with this aliasing in the internal jugular vein, it can be hard to determine if there's disease present and or even the direction of flow within that vessel. So baseline can be a helpful tool when the PRF control has already been optimized to its maximum optimal points, and if you're only focusing on one vessel moving in one direction. If there's more than one vessel or flow that's moving in more than one direction, then use the baseline control more sparingly.